Hey everyone, so today we're going to take a look at one of my absolute favorite weapons as black. This is an opening that has given me a countless number of wins, especially in Blitz and Bullet, where the white players are not so sure on how to react to this move and don't have the time to really think deeply on how they should react. So the weapon is against 1e4, which is the most common move that you're going to be seeing, especially in Blitz and Bullet. We play c5, going into the Sicilian defense. Now the most common move here is knight f3, white's developing their knight, and we play e6. White goes d4, looking to open up the game. We take and white recaptures in the center. Now this is where we deviate from standard lines. The typical response here would be moves such as knight f6, knight c6, a6, even queen c7 are all pretty common moves here. But the move that we'll be looking at today is the very tricky queen to b6. Now if we look at the number of times that this move gets played at the amateur level, we can see that from this position, queen b6 is only played 1% of the time. So it's incredibly rare, and players of the white side typically don't know how to react to this. So we move our queen out to b6, we are starting to put pressure on the knight in the center, and we put pressure on b2 as well. So when you start facing stronger opposition, you'll start to encounter knight b3 as the main response here, and they play it in a slow positional manner with c4, looking for a Meroxibine type setup. But against your typical club players and online players as well, the most common response that you'll see in this position is actually knight to c3. So white is playing the same way that they would play any other open Sicilian position. Now, the key part to this variation is we bring our bishop out to c5. And look at this. It is only five moves into the game, and black is already threatening to win a piece, right? So this knight is on, under attack in the middle of the board, and white needs to do something about it. I have seen so many horrible ways of white trying to, to deal with these issues. The most common approach that you will see in this variation is bringing the knight out to a4 here, where the knight attacks both the queen and the bishop. White thinks that he's being incredibly smart, he's attacking both of these pieces, and his idea is that he'll take your bishop after the black queen moves and he'll have the bishop pair. What we do is we give a check, he then intercepts that check with c3. Our bishop is under attack, and so we simply take the knight. Now this pawn is pinned, so white recaptures the bishop with the queen. In this position here, in blitz and board games, for white players who aren't really familiar with this position, they all think that they are going incredibly well. They've got a piece developed, they have a pawn in the center, they have a centralized queen, they are pressuring g7 at the moment, which at the moment is hanging and would lose the rook as well. So white players in this situation would be feeling very confident about themselves. We simply play knight f6, blocking that attack onto g7. And in this position here, I have seen so many incredible one-move blunders even from players as highly rated as 2,200. Now let's first take a look at some of the common blunders that I have seen played against me. This is also from actually fairly strong opposition. So the white player in this situation sees that you're pressuring the knight on a4, and they actually find that quite annoying because some of the moves that they might like to play would be, for example, bishop to c4, or maybe they want to push their pawn up to c4, Maybe they want to retreat their queen, where it's going to come under attack. And so all of these moves that white would like to play actually hang the knight. And so what a lot of white players do in this position is they play b4, thinking, hey, I'm going to hit the queen, the queen's going to retreat back, and then I can start proceeding with my plans. But actually pushing b4 and attacking the queen just simply drops the knight as the queen is no longer protecting it. It is incredible how many times that blunder has been played against me. 
One of the other blunders that is played against me fairly frequently as well, believe it or not, in this position is bishop to g5. A very natural developing move for the bishop. White now has two attackers against the f6 knight. He thinks that he is about to win a pawn or damage black structure. But this queen on a5 simply slides across and picks up the bishop. Now it is incredible how often that move, bishop g5, is played. If we look at the statistics down here, we can see that bishop g5 here in this position is played in 10% of the games and it simply hangs a piece in one move. It is absolutely incredible to see how, how frequently people just make this one move blunder in this position. Now, believe it or not, those two one move blunders that we just looked at aren't the only way for white to immediately lose the position. So the second most common move in this position, believe it or not, is bishop d3. So white brings out his bishop to a natural aggressive diagonal. He'd like to push forward e5, opening up his bishop to attack against the black king side. What is there not to like about this move? It's so natural. We're developing our pieces. We're getting ready to castle. We're putting ourselves on active diagonals. This move loses the game immediately for white. And it's such a natural move. And I have had so many incredibly strong players play this move against me. Why is this move losing? We simply play knight to c6. We are now hitting the queen. The queen needs to be very careful where she steps because she is required to guard the knight on a4. So white will typically move their queen across to c4. They think they've got things under control. They just stepped out of that attack from the knight. They also have their knight on a4 protected as well. But now we simply jump into e5. We're hitting the queen and the bishop. The queen obviously has to move because she's being attacked by the knight. And let's say, for example, the queen moves across to here to protect the bishop and to step out of the line of sight from the knight. We simply take that bishop with check. The queen recaptures and this knight is loose again. So we pick up that knight. It is absolutely incredible the number of times that I've had strong opposition play bishop to d3 against me. And again, if we look back at the statistics here, we can see bishop to d3 is played 13% of the time. So an absolutely incredible situation here. So in this position, which you're gonna get a lot, especially in blitz and bullet against players below 2000, you're gonna get this position a lot. And so many of the natural moves for white are just simple one move blunders that just lose the game immediately. So it's an incredible weapon for you to have in your arsenal that will catch a lot of players off guard. So how is black actually supposed to react to this position? Well, what they should be doing is simply relocating their knight here to c5. And the best thing for us to do here now as black is to simply drop our queen back to c7 as she's not really fulfilling any purposes anymore from a5. A lot of players here will typically then push forward with e5. We centralize our knight. And what we look to do here as black is we look to castle, push f6, and we then start opening up the center for our bishop to come out as well. So it's a relatively straightforward plan. Okay, so let's go back and have a look at some other possibilities here. So that was taking a look at the branch with knight a4 which you are going to be seeing an incredibly high amount of times. One of the other common things that you're going to be seeing, especially in games below 2000 ELO, is you're going to be seeing bishop to e3. So white is saying, okay, you can have that b2 pawn, but in exchange, your queen might get trapped eventually, and I'm going to start developing some incredible initiative as well. So you're going to be seeing this approach fairly frequently, especially as you start facing stronger opposition. Now, the approach that I like against bishop e3 is not to take that pawn, but instead we add to that pressure in the center of the board. So now we have three pieces attacking that centralized knight, and white only has two. We, as black, are putting the initiative onto white. 
We are making attacking moves. We are threatening pieces and white needs to respond to this. So in this situation, black is the one that's actually determining the, the pace and the direction of the game. So what you're gonna see in this position is one of three possible knight moves. You'll potentially see knight to a4 with the same idea again. And this is probably what you're gonna be seeing most frequently. You might see the knight from c3 jump into b5 with ideas that he's reinforcing his knight. You might see the knight from d4 jumping into b5 as well. And this is actually a very common move in this position. So let's take a look at some of them. So knight to a4, we take the same approach, we give the check, white interposes with c3, and in this situation here we take with the bishop, white recaptures, we trade, and we bring our knight out to f6 as well. And we have a very stable position here as black. The same continuation might happen where we see this position and we're looking to simply castle, play f6, and start pushing our central pawns as well. So very easy to follow plan here for black. Okay, that's knight a4. The move that I personally most commonly see in my games in this position is the knight from d4 moving in here to b5. So his idea is that potentially getting this nasty looking check or in some situations getting to c7 where he'd be forking the black king and rook. So in this situation, we simply take on e3, white will recapture, and we just gobble up that pawn. White will typically intercept that with the bishop. Now in this position, we need to make sure that we don't lose a rook as this is a pretty big threat in the position. Believe it or not, the best move to play here is simply moving our king out of the way. So the knight coming into c7 is no longer a check. The knight coming into d6 is not a check. You might think to yourself, oh, but the white queen is crashing through here. This is a horrifying check to deal with. But actually it really isn't because we simply intercept that check with our knight. So in this position, black is perfectly fine. You might think to yourself, oh, I'm in a horrible position because my king can't castle. But actually white, but actually white can't castle here as well. As we can see, both kingside and queenside castling aren't possible as, as our queen here on e3 is keeping the white king a prisoner in the center of the board. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so we've had a look at the knight coming into a4. We've had a look at the knight from d4 coming into b5. But looking at this position and looking at the stats as well, one of the most common things that you're going to be seeing here is white simply taking the knight on c6. He thinks, hey, the best way for me to resolve this situation with my knight constantly being under threat every single move is let me just exchange it on c6. I'll get rid of the piece and everything will be fine. So in this situation, once again, we take on e3. White recaptures, and we snag that pawn. White intercepts, and here we take back the knight with the big pawn, and we're ready to push our pawns either with d5, or we can look at playing this pawn structure instead, looking to get our bishop nice and active. So again, a great position here for black, and we are a pawn up as well. So how can you not like that on the opening? Okay, so the rule of thumb then is basically anytime this central knight moves in this position, either to b5 or capturing on c6, for either of those moves, we take their bishop, right? So if he comes to b5, we take that bishop, right? It's a simple rule to understand. Anytime this guy moves anywhere, we take that bishop. So the other sneaky attempt that white can try to do is he can try to bring his knight in here to b5. So the knight from c3 into b5. So in this variation, we can't take that bishop on e3 because the knight is in the way. He's guarding his knight as well. So exchanging in the center isn't really gonna do much other than liquefy a whole bunch of pieces. So the approach that I like to take in this position is to simply develop the knight on f6 
and adding more chaos to the board. So have a look at this. We've got pieces under attack. We've got a pawn that's hanging at the moment. There is so much happening at this stage that most players here will just simply be unable to process the complications, especially in a blitz or a bullet game. White wants to simplify the complications so they just take on c6 and exchange pieces. Now, once again, remember the rule. White just moved his knight from d4, allowing us to take the bishop on a3. So we do not recapture, right? We do not recapture this knight. We first take the bishop on e3. Now, the key here and the key difference in this position is that white does not immediately retake that bishop. He instead throws in this check. He thinks to himself, wow, I've got these squares covered, which the king can't escape to. The king has to go to f8. Surely this must be a great situation for white. So a lot of white players, in, especially in blitz and bullet, would be absolutely licking their lips at this position here. He retakes, we take with check, he'll bring out his bishop, and in this situation here, we simply retake the knight with our b-pawn, and we have a very simple plan here as black. The thorn on our side is this knight on d6, which is preventing us from mobilizing our central pawns. So our plan is we'd like to bring up our king, to e7 to put pressure on that knight. With our king on a7, we'd like to bring our queen here to c5 as well, and we'd look to just evict that knight out from that position. So let's see how things could play out, because there's one more very important detail that you'd need to know about this position, and it would catch a lot of players out in blitz and bullet. So typically here, white will bring out their rook to f1. They're looking to evict the queen. We step up with our king, we are pressuring that knight. White proceeds with his plan, he's looking to kick out the queen. Now, in this situation, we can throw in this check, whether we do that or not. Doesn't really change things too much. But the point is that we can drop our queen back here, we are now pressuring this knight, and white will slide his rook across to defend that knight, right? So now he's got two defenders and we've got two attackers. Now, the approach that I like to take in this position, and this catches off a lot of players as well. We simply bring our rook across to the half open file here, pressuring the loose pawn on b2, and a lot of players in this situation will play b3, right? They don't want to lose that pawn, so they push the pawn up to protect it. And now there is this move here, queen to e5, which hits all sorts of things. So first of all, we are attacking this pawn, right? We've got two attackers, and white only has one defender. We are also attacking a2 as well, which is undefended. And in some variations, it might be important that we are also attacking this rook here as well. So if for whatever reason white wants to develop their queen naturally to d2, then they need to make sure that they are not dropping their rook. Okay, so that's a bit of a whirlwind tour on this crazy queen b6 sideline variation of the Sicilian defense, and it has provided me a countless number of wins, both in Blitz and Bullet, and so hopefully it can do the same for you as well.